Hi everyone. I'm Ginger Balch from In Sheep's Clothing, Yarn Shop in Torrington, welcoming you to another episode of Focus on Fiber. This time of year, we see pumpkins everywhere. How about learning to knit or needle felt your own decorative pumpkin? Well, you're in luck because today, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We have these cute little pumpkins today, and these are done uh, doing a uh, method called needle felting. And what we do is we take fiber, which has been dyed, but has not been spun up. So this is just wool that's ready to either be spun or to be felted. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this needle, which is called a needle felting needle, and we're going to be poking the fiber into place. So we're basically going to be kind of sculpting with wool today. So the other thing that I have is a sponge and these are one of those sponges that you can get for washing your cars and I just kind of slice it in half or you can keep it in one piece and it's also a very good way to keep your needle um, safely um, out of the way um, because these are super sharp needles and they can really give you a pretty nasty stab. Okay, so this is one of the most simple things that you could possibly make and what I do is take my fiber and I'm just going to make, I'm just going to kind of wind it up into a ball, actually. You want to do a little bit tighter here. I'm just going to wind it. And actually, I kind of like to open up my fiber. Now, fiber comes in different, um, different, um, different, or prepared different ways. This happens to be roving. So this is really ready to spin. So what I want to do is kind of open up my fiber. You can also get it in a form that's called, um, uh, I can't, the word's actually escaping me at the moment, um, but it's a flatter piece in a bat. So it's a flat piece that you can uh, do what you want with. So I'm just going to kind of, whoops, just going to wind it around like this in different directions, because that's kind of important for the fiber, for the felting process. So I'm just gonna fold it over like that, and I'll take another piece, and you can see it just rips really easily because it's not spun. And I'm just gonna kind of open up the fiber a little bit, like this. And I apologize for my raspy voice. I'm just getting over bronchitis. Doesn't wanna to seem to let go. Um, here we go, like that. And now I'm just going to overlap my fiber again and just kind of wrap it so that it looks something like a ball. And I'm doing it fairly loosely, not doing it really tight. And we'll just keep doing that. And you'll do it till you get it to about the size, a little bigger than what you think you want it to be. Because in the felting process, we're going to be compacting the fiber and it will become smaller. So like these were probably, you know, they were much, they were bigger, not quite uh, double the size. So I'm just opening up this fiber like that. And you can have short pieces and wind it on. It doesn't have to be all one big piece like this. And I'm just over, overlapping. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. I'm just overlapping and winding into place like that. I'm going to add one more layer. I want it to be a little bit bigger. Now another little trick too is you can get fiber in all different colors. Um, you could do some amazing things um, with the fi uh, needle felting. You could do pictures. Um, you, you could just do um, animals. Amazing stuff. Um, kind of sculptural pieces. Um, so you can get lots of different colors. You can also dye it yourself if you wanted to. Um, so if you want, you can get this a natural color as well. And what you can do is actually use the natural, which in some cases is less expensive than your colored dyed, and use that for your center and then cover it with your main color so that you're not wasting your good color. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and these needles, you can get them single like this. You can also get little um, uh, pieces that you can put the needles in that will hold them for you and kind of keep them safer. 
Um, but this is how I'm doing it today. So I'm just going to put this up in my lap. And the reason for the sponge is so that when you're poking, that you're not actually poking into something. Like, I'm going to go gentle because I don't want to go into my lap. Um, and that's why sometimes having the full-size sponge is good. Um, and then the other thing is, and I can't stress this enough, is that as you're poking, you don't want to be looking around. You don't want to be watching TV. If you're talking to somebody, you need to stop. And you can look at them and, and poke. But you don't want to be poking and looking around because that's the time that you're going to stab your finger. And this, I, I just can't say it enough, this kind of stab is the kind that you get poked and it keeps, it gets worse and worse because there's little barbs on these needles. It's almost like a little fish hook. Um, so it's not like your typical needle. So what you're going to do is you're just going to poke. And what happens is that as the needle is going in, it's making the fiber, um, it, it's having the fiber connect, um, pull together on itself so that this nice fluffy fiber that you have gets harder and harder and harder. And you can see that it starts to get smaller and smaller and more compact. So what you do is you just keep doing it round and round and round. Now they do have tools that you can have multiple needles. Um, one of my favorites, one favorite ones is for like a three prong tool. But for something like this, I really kind of prefer the one. And it really doesn't take that long to just keep poking and to see that it's starting to get tighter and tighter. And you want to go all the way through you don't want to be just a little gentle with it. You really want to, to go through with this. And I'm just going to keep poking around, poking around. And you can hear the fibers starting to mesh together. And you can also, you can hear that when you put it in the sponge. Those are the barbs. And you can start to see that it's starting to stick together. Like the layers are going to not fall apart like there's the tail. I'm going to just poke that right in so it won't come out. It's kind of like basting all your fibers together. And I'm just going to keep doing that around. And now this can take, you know, it could take a while to do this, you know, depending on the size that you're doing. And also it's up to you how firm um, that you want your piece to be done. You can poke these so much that they are really, really solid pieces. You can also choose to, like this one here, it's still pretty soft. Like the fibers are not totally meshed yet. It's, it, this was using a different fiber. Um, and, it's, and it's funny because your felting fibers can be very different from company to company, brand to brand that you use because the different wool fibers are different and the way that they prepare them are different. Like the outside of this one is actually the fiber that I'm using right now. So I'm just going to keep poking. I'm not going to make it as solid as I necessarily would because I don't want to bore you to tears watch, having you watch me poke the fiber into place. And the cool thing about this is that pumpkins come in all sizes, shapes. They do not have to look absolutely perfect. So if your felting is not perfect, that's fine because that's the kind of pumpkin that you are making is one of those unique out of the pumpkin patch pumpkins. And then you also, we're not paying any attention to the bottom of it. So we'll pay some attention to the bottom. Now I was teaching a class on making these pumpkins and one of my students, she made a pumpkin, came out absolutely adorable and she came back in, she got more fiber and what she was doing was making a pumpkin. This was before Thanksgiving. She was going to make a pumpkin for each place setting at her table, which I thought was just such a cute idea. And of course they got to take it home with them. So that made it even a little bit more special too. 
So I'm going to say that right now that's pretty good. We can always, the other thing about the, the needle felting, you could always go back. Whenever I'm teaching a class, I tend to take one of my pumpkins I've already made and I will demonstrate some of the, um, what I'm, the techniques on the pumpkin. And I just keep, I just keep um, adding more details to my pumpkin and it just keeps getting better and better every time I touch it. Um, so anyway, so what we're going to do now is now we have our, our round pumpkin. Now we need to make some shapes to it. We want to make those, um, the little sections. So you can make them, you know, you can figure it out, make it perfectly even, or just kind of wing it. So I like to wing things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the center, from the top here, and I'm just going to poke a line down. And then what I'm going to do is keep doing that line. I'll go back and forth, back and forth on that one line. And you can see that it's starting to make like a little indentation because the needle is really poking it into place. So, okay, so there's one section. And I'm going to turn it around and let's go down the other side. Make it somewhat symmetrical. And I'm going to poke down and come back up again. And I'm just going to keep poking, making that indentation. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to do another one right here. And you can see how quickly it starts to take shape. See that little section right there? And you just want to make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way as you're doing this. And another thing too is with these needles, uh, it's just the nature of these needles. Um, they're very brittle. And you want to make sure that as you're poking, you don't poke and bend. You want to, you can go from different directions. I'll make another section here. Um, you can go from the side like this, but don't poke and bend because that will snap your needle in no time flat. And whenever you start a project, you should always have a couple on hand because you never know. So there's another. So see how my little sections are happening here? So let's do another one. I'm just kind of paying attention to the top part of the pumpkin at the moment. Okay, let's get the top here. We can go to the bottom in a little bit. Okay, let's do a section here. But you can also, as you're doing this, you can feel it. It's definitely getting much more tight, especially this top part. It's much firmer than it was when I first started because that needle is just um, pushing those fibers all together. Okay, I think we could do one more right here. And I've had people tell me this is a really good thing if you're a little upset about something, you can use this and get a little aggression out. Just keep poking at that. I don't want to say that you're going to be thinking about somebody in particular, but maybe thinking about a particular situation, thinking about how you're going to remedy it and just keep poking. And I'm just going to go back to one of my sections here. And that's it. You just keep going back and forth to your sections and then just kind of look at it and say, you know, you make little changes to it. I'm going to start at the top again and just really work on making those sections really stand out. And then what you can also do is once you get your, your segments really made, you can also go back to the pumpkin and just kind of poke those in a little bit too, because this is actually, the outside is actually softer 
than all this inside sections are that you've spent so much time uh, needling. And then, let's see here. We're getting pretty close to being as done as I'm going to do this one today. Okay. And then you have the bottom, and you can always go back to the bottom. You know, you can have your segments go down as far as you want. And you want to leave the bottom a little flat so that it will sit nice and straight on the table or wherever you're going to put it. So I'm going to emphasize those segments all the way down. And every time you make one of these, they're always going to come out looking a little different. Here we go. So there's our little pumpkin up here. And I'm actually, I'm not going to spend too much time on the top of it because we also want to put, <clears throat> we want to put our little stem on the top here. And that's going to cover the top part here. So we don't have to go too crazy making that all perfect. And besides, it's a pumpkin. It's not doesn't need to be perfect, remember, unless you want it to be. Okay, so now I'm just going to set that aside. So there's our pumpkin. Now, to make our stem, I'm going to take a little bit of this brown, and I'm just going to take a little piece of it, and I'm going to pull it. You don't want to cut this. You want to pull it. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to fold it on itself like this. And I want these stray ends on that end. And I'm not going to really touch that. And I set this down. And then what I'm going to do is just poke this. And that's the needle doing the work of getting those fibers all meshed. Now what you want to do is you don't want to keep doing just one side. You want to pick it up. And you can see how it starts to get meshed into the felt, into the um, sponge. And then you want to turn it over. And we're going to keep poking at it and turning it over. And poking it and turning it over. And I'm going to do it a quarter turn. And this will take a little bit to do. But it's starting to mesh. We want to leave these wispy ends because that's how we're going to connect it to the pumpkin. Go. So you can see the fuzz that's sticking out of this that's getting meshed into the um, sponge. I'll just keep poking at it. That. Oops. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just going to take it and we're going to open it up, kind of making it look like it has octopus legs. I want to get like four. Well, maybe just, well, we'll see how it works. And then I'm going to pop this on top, like this, on top of the pumpkin. Now, this is where you might want to take a little care. You can, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a needle and I'll hold it in place with the needle, like that, so that my fingers aren't in the way. And now I'm going to poke the stem down like that. I'm going to turn it around, hold it in place again, and I'm going to poke that piece down. Turn it around, 
and actually I'm just going to hold the knee at the side here. And this is where you kind of take a little artistic license here. I want it to go into the groove of the pumpkin of the segment. And I'm just going to poke those into place. You can also leave them a little wispy if you want. But I'm going to poke that stem down. Get that little wispy piece in there. And actually, what I want to do with this one is I'm going to take a little bit more fiber and I'm just going to put it on here because I don't have enough of the brown. There we go. And that covers up the top. And I'm going to fold this back a little bit and catch that in there. There we go. Now, if you want, and I call this the scary pumpkin. Take just little wisps like that. I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to put it back in here because I want some more. And you can decide what you want it to look like. There we go. This pumpkin's looking a little bit like he's from, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of that movie, the one that does the cartoons. But there you go, you get the idea, and you just put that in. You can also, if you want, take a pair of scissors and just trim it up a little bit. Or you can leave the wispiness if you want. You can also, if you wanted to, just take a little piece of this. Like this, and just kind of make a little round piece. Turn it over. Just give it a little thing at the bottom of your pumpkin here. Because sometimes they have that little, almost like a little belly button on it. Like that. But that's it. I didn't bring any scissors with me, so I can't trim this up a little bit. But I would trim, either trim or just poke these down. So they're not fuzzy. I tend to like them not quite so fuzzy. Like that. But as you're going, you can keep adding more detail to your pumpkin. Like that. This guy looks very, very organic, but cute. And of course, depending on how much fiber you use, you can make them all different shapes, different sizes. And just keep going like that. And there we go. Now, of course, one pumpkin leads to another. You can do gourds. One, of, I keep saying every year I'm going to do this. I have one of those um, woven basket uh, cornucopias, and I keep saying I'm going to make a bunch of uh, pumpkins and squash and all kinds of vegetables and and felt them and put them into the the uh, cornucopia um, for my table. And maybe if I keep doing demos like this, I'll get enough made up that I can do that um, in time for maybe next Thanksgiving. But there you go. And so all you need to do is get some fiber, just a couple needles, your sponge, and all your creativity, and you can make a whole slew of pumpkins, a little pumpkin patch of your own. And of course, you're looking at all these knitted pumpkins that I have here, and we're going to be doing our next 
episode on knitted pumpkins. So anyway, thank you very much for spending time with me today and learning how to create your own needle felted pumpkin. I hope that you had fun. You'll have fun making your own and better yet enjoying making some with your friends and family because as you know, it's always important to have a focus on fiber. See you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.